Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin and we've got another cheap computer from China to check out. This is the Jumper EZ Pad 6 and it's a detachable two-in-one. You've probably seen computers like this before. Uh, this one sells for anywhere between $185 and $200 on GearBest.com. We'll be putting it through its paces today. This is a smaller version of the Jumper laptop that we looked at about two weeks ago that had some flaws. This one isn't perfect either, and I'll point out uh, some of the areas where you should be concerned here in just a second. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that this came to the channel free of charge from GearBest.com. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. Now, before we do our usual hardware overview, I do want to let you know that this is a buy at your own risk proposition. I always like to start off these videos on these off-brand uh, computers in the same way because I don't know what kind of long-term support you'll get out of this company or even if the company will be around in the long term. These brands come and go and uh, you never know when they'll go kaput or uh, just won't respond to an email or something. So you are taking a risk when you buy this thing, but these things are typically inexpensive enough that you're not losing all that much money if it were to drop dead six or eight months from now. But just know you're not going to get the kind of support out of this one that you might out of a name brand that costs more. You get what you pay for. So that out of the way, uh, let's take a look at the overall hardware here. We've got an 11.6 inch 1080p IPS display. It is not the brightest display in the world, even when it's plugged in, but it's adequate in uh, decent room lighting, but I don't think you'll do very well with it out of doors. There's a little bit of bleed through on the display, but I expect that out of an inexpensive IPS display, but it will uh, be better than what your expectations might be for this particular PC. Now it's got an Atom Cherry Trail processor from Intel. This is the X5Z8350. I'm very disappointed that they're not developing this processor line further. It's really brought PC prices down significantly and they were really uh, amping up the performance curve on these chips. But uh, unfortunately, I think this is about the fastest we'll ever get out of the Atom line. But thankfully, they're, I think, at least still pumping out these processors and if not liquidating them because there's a ton of these things flooding the market right now. Uh, four gigabytes of RAM, which is a good thing. We looked at uh, the Lenovo Mix uh, 320 about two weeks ago. That is a similar detachable two-in-one. That one starts at $200 but only has two gigabytes of RAM and this one has four. And if you want to see the difference that uh, RAM difference makes in one of these machines, I've got a video linked down below where you can see what four gigabytes of RAM will get you versus two. It has 64 gigabytes of storage, the same as the mix. It is eMMC storage, and you, of course, can augment that with an SD card if you want. So not a huge amount of storage, but better than 32. Uh, the screen here detaches like so. All the guts of the computer and the battery are in here. I expect about four to five hours of battery life out of this. Not fantastic, but uh, adequate enough. It is a 16 by 9 display, so when you are uh, in portrait mode here, it will be a little on the longer side. Side, at least for my liking, but uh, does very well with movies because of the aspect ratio here. Uh, the keyboard dock is just that, a dock. There is no uh, way to get extra batteries uh, plugged into this thing and it doesn't dock as uh, nicely as the Lenovo did. You do have to eyeball it. There is a magnet to kind of guide you back in, but uh, you do need to eyeball it because many times I've been getting it off uh, one of the hinges there, so you need to get that in place there. It does close up pretty nice though. I was surprised because the last jumper PC we looked at had some tolerance issues in the manufacturing. Uh, this one seems to fold up pretty nice and has a nice hinge to it, but you can't flip the screen around and put it on this way because it just the magnet actually pushes against you there. So it doesn't look like it's designed to be uh, put in backwards for a uh, display mode there. Now the total package here when you've got the keyboard attached is just over three pounds. It's about 1.36 kilograms. The tablet on its own is 710 grams. So not all that heavy. It's a little lighter, of course, without the keyboard dock attached. Uh, speaking of the keyboard, I'm actually okay with the keyboard, believe it or not. Uh, the keys are nicely spaced. Even though they're smaller than normal keys, I think for me, I type faster when I've got adequate spacing between these tiny keys, and I seem to be doing pretty well on it. Uh, the keyboard does kind of bow in the middle as you're typing on it. You'll see it, that's kind of the whole mo thing moving here when I hit the H key, but uh, overall, I haven't had a problem typing on it. Uh, like the last uh, jumper PC we looked at, the trackpad is terrible. Uh, very, very sensitive, and because it's so small here, uh, I'm often hitting these gestures by accident. So you may have to disable all the extra gestures to uh, keep the mouse working, but 
Uh, it does not track very well. It is rather small, um, but it does let you click actually higher up on the pad, unlike the last jumper PC we looked at that had a very small click area. So it's not terrible, at least not terrible like the last jumper PC, but uh, not very good and a little too sensitive to my liking. The touch screen, of course, does work as a nice alternative here. So if you want to have more accuracy, actually, I think touching the screen might be the better way to go. Now, here's where things kind of went off the rails for me on this computer, which is the keyboard dock. So we've seen a number of computers like this one, like the Asus and a few others that have the keyboard dock with additional USB ports in it. The problem is, is that there's not enough voltage to uh, supply power to the things that you plug into this. So the only thing I could get working on either one of these USB ports, and these are USB 2 ports, by the way, uh, was a keyboard and a mouse. Every time I plugged in uh, an external hard drive, even like a SSD, a very low powered SSD, it would disable the entire keyboard because there's just not enough power going to it uh, to get everything working together. So if you want to uh, plug in a drive or something, you'll need to have a powered USB hub uh, or you can use its OTG USB port over here, and that does seem to work with an OTG cable. So just bear that in mind. These two ports are useful for a keyboard or a mouse or something, but nothing more than that because they just don't get enough power. There is a micro HDMI output here, so you can output to a 4K display if you want. I think these max out at 30 frames per second, but if you do want to use an external display, you can do that. You have a headphone microphone jack here, and this is where the power input goes. And this is one of those things where I can see people plugging the power into the wrong port. It shouldn't be a problem, but I just don't like having these ports next to each other like this, and it's very easy, given that the power cord is so tiny, to stick it into the headphone jack by accident. That's just a disaster waiting to happen. There is a micro SD card slot here. You can pop in, I think, up to a 64 gigabyte card, and that will uh, go flush to the unit here, so you can carry that storage around with you all the time. On the other side here, there is just a speaker. It does have a stereo sound. Not the best sound, but it's there, and it's stereo, and it's got decent separation. So that's a good thing. Uh, passable webcam here on the front for web conversations. I think it's like VGA resolution only, so not fantastic, but it's there and it's usable if you uh, want to get at it. So that's the overall hardware. Now we're going to start our uh, testing of its performance and see what it can do. So we're going to kick things off with some YouTube watching here. I've got my 1080p 60 video playing for my YouTube channel on Edge, and I'm not seeing any drop frames here. It seems to be playing back just fine. One of the things that you'll see with these Atom Cherry Trail processors is that they typically perform the same computer to computer because so much of the system is integrated onto a single chip that Intel produces. There's very little variation, at least what I've seen uh, over the years, uh, testing out these devices in how one works versus the other with the same processor. A lot of times it comes down to form factor and uh, build quality more than anything. If I go onto the web here, we'll hit up nasa.gov and we'll see how fast the page comes in. Uh, one thing this uh, device lacks is wireless AC. So you're not going to get the fastest wireless connections available. It just runs on 2.4 gigahertz wireless, but it seems to be working fine for what you're paying for it and about where I've seen other Cherry Trail devices perform. Maybe a little slower perhaps due to uh, the slower Wi-Fi on here, but I think it's good enough and adequate for basic web browsing. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, I got a score of 19.4, which puts it right within the margin of error compared to other Atom-based devices with the same chip. So that's a good thing. It performs where we would expect it to. It also seems to be doing okay with Microsoft Word and Office applications. We've got uh, my newsletter template here that I like to throw at these computers. And uh, sure enough, it's able to do uh, work just fine, which is a good thing, especially given you're not paying all that much for a 1080p detachable tablet here. Gaming, though, of course, on these low-end chips is another story. So let's take a look and see how well it does with some entertainment stuff. Now, what fun would a review on my channel be without some Minecraft? This is uh, the PC Java version of Minecraft running at around 20 frames per second, as you can see. Uh, we are at 1080p, so I could probably get better performance if I turn the resolution down. I did install the Optifine performance enhancing plugin to squeeze a little more performance out of this one. I do think that the Windows 10 version of Minecraft will run better on this than this version does, just because there's more uh, overhead with the Java running here, but uh, you can see what you'll expect to get out of it here. These are not gaming machines by any stretch, so I would really look at older games, casual games, a lot of the tablet games should work okay on here, but you're not going to get GTA 5 or anything uh, current running on this all that well. Minecraft is probably about as far as I would go with it. Let's take a look at something that does run, though, pretty nicely on it, a little game called Shovel Knight. 
So here we've got Shovel Knight running now, and I turn the resolution down to 720p, and I am running at 60 frames per second. The lowest it goes is about 58 frames per second, so it's more than playable here, which is a good thing. And one of the things that I have found on the Steam Store is that if you look for games that will run on an Intel Core or Core 2 Duo processor, they should probably run okay on here. My typical rule of thumb is, is if the game is like 10 years old, it should run on here. Not all the time, of course. There's some games that require uh, beefier GPUs back then, but generally uh, games from 10 years ago uh, should be fine. And some newer games like Shovel Knight here that aren't all that intensive uh, should also work. But definitely do your research. It's not going to uh, work with something that might require a more modern processor. So if it is calling for like an i3, even an i3 from a few generations ago, this probably isn't good enough for that. But again, look for Core 2 Duo, and I think you'll find a lot of games that you can play pretty nicely on here. And on the 3 d Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 1,351. That puts its performance below what we've seen from other similar Atom-based devices that we've looked at over the last year or so. Not significantly so, given that none of them can actually play games all that great, but it doesn't perform graphically as well as some of those other similar PCs do. But let's take a look now and see how it can do with multimedia playback with Kodi. So we're going to start off with a low bitrate HEVC file. This one is uh, not too demanding here. It is a 4K file, though, getting downsampled to the 1080p display here. And it does skip a frame or two here as it plays back, but it is able to do some of the low impact HEVC. Uh, the higher end stuff, like the 60 megabits uh, per second files, are going to be completely unplayable, as you can see here. These chips are just not optimized for uh, some of the newer HEVC stuff that's out there. But it will do well with uh, things like Blu-ray MK. KV files. So we're going to load this one up off of my external drive here. I'll fast forward to a uh, later portion in the movie and we'll pull up our uh, little uh, statistics screen here and we'll get an idea as to what we're seeing. So I did have a drop frame. I think that might have been when I dr uh, jumped over to this portion of the film, but it is able to play this back just fine, uh, just like other Cherry Trail devices are able to do. Now I did try to install some alternative operating systems on here. Uh, like other Cherry Trail devices, I have fallen short. I tried three different distributions this time. I did Remix OS. I also installed the uh, latest build of Fedora and I also tried Ubuntu. So all of those worked like I could get up to the desktops and browse around. The video display looked proper, but I was not able to get audio or Wi-Fi working. That's a typical problem I've seen uh, with these Cherry Trail devices and Linux operating systems. So we'll keep trying. I'm sure at some point somebody will get the drivers right, but right now it doesn't work so well with third-party operating systems. But it was very easy to get into the BIOS and uh, adjust the boot settings. I just had to hit the escape key at boot, and I was able to select my external drive to try to uh, get something working on it. But overall, I have to say this one exceeded my expectations. Now, my expectations, admittedly, were very low given what we saw on the last Jumper PC we looked at here, but there are no significant build issues. And I do think at $185, which is the sale price at the moment, this is actually not such a bad deal, provided you take into account the warning I made at the beginning of the video. I don't think you'll ever get any kind of support for this thing, but if you can get a year or two out of it, I think you'll get your money's worth, especially at uh, the $185 sale price. Four gigs of RAM and a 1080 display is a pretty good uh, configuration here, especially given you get the keyboard and everything else. It is not perfect though, especially its lack of power going to this keyboard base. So you will need a, a USB hub if you intend to use these ports for anything more than a uh, mouse or a keyboard or something like that. Uh, the other issue I had with it was the power cord. It is very short, so short that I have to keep my power uh, strip here on the desk to uh, get this thing powered up for the review. So there's some uh, minor issues with it, but overall, at least on my first impression here, it is uh, not bad for the price. But if you have a little more to spend, I would strongly urge you to look at the Lenovo Mix 320. It doesn't cost all that much more for the four gigabyte version, and you'll get a, a much higher quality machine that is backed up by a multinational corporation with the ability to support it. So that's one thing to uh, bear in mind as you're doing your shopping. But if you only have 185 bucks to spend, then you can get yourself one of these things at that price, I think it's worth taking the plunge to uh, get a fun little computer to play around with that runs the full version of Windows that's also, by the way, fully licensed and uh, seems to be on the up and up from all of the licensing stuff. So that'll do it for this review of the Jumper Easy Pad 6, and this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Cody Falk. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.